Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sid. I am Mackie. We are here today with Lee McCormick Hello. from Lee Likes Bikes and, and Rip Ripro. Rip yeah, this is the second one of our videos where we've sat down with someone that we work with in the bike industry and asked them your questions. If you want to get in on the questions, you will have to join us on Patreon because that's where we get the questions. We're just going to talk a little bit with Lee about when we started working with him, how we've been working with him, um, what he has seen a uh, change in our riding since we've been working with him. Mm -hmm. um, then we'll transition to talk about the rip row a little bit because that's been a big part of our training recently. And then at the end, we will get to your guys' questions and specifically answer those, or Lee can specifically answer those. Um, I'm Lee and I like bikes. <laughs> good, I good. I suppose, <laughs> you know, like I've been liking bikes for over 30 years, you know? Nice. That's I've... more than years that I've been alive. Something else. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Like, I, I, I've had normal careers, you know? Like, 30 years ago, like, the same day, I got a mountain bike and I started a journalism school. Like, the same day. Nice. It's like the same day. That's awesome. And then, like, and those those worlds just were, like, they were parallel. Like, I loved to ride. I rode to school. I was a roadie. I was a triathlete. I always had a good sprint, you know? Um, and then, ultimately, I became a gravity racer, and that's where I did the best. You know, and, and, and in parallel, I, I worked in daily newspapers and my specialty was infographics. So if you have one of my books, you see the infographics. Like, that was my first career. So, you mentioned books. So, Lee has written... I've, I've done nine books so far. Wow. So, the, the best known one, which has been translated into all sorts of languages and stuff, is Mastering Mountain Bike Skills. It's on version three? Three, yep. Um, and actually, Sid and I have, like, a page and some questions in version three, so it's pretty awesome. It's really good. Yeah. And, and there's pictures of you guys riding. And there's some pictures yeah. of us. So, we will actually have a, 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 a <laughs> link to that book if... You know, you guys are interested, it'll be in the description, so you can go check that out. Speaking of just, I'm stepping ahead, but you're like, here's proof that you guys are improving. Uh, there's pictures of you guys in the book, like, doing perfect technique. That's good. Like, in the jumping chapter, Sid, there's a picture of you jumping. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, this is perfect. Yeah. So, there's that. <laughs> That's good. That's My good. jumping. Like, I could have got a picture of Brian Lopes jumping. <laughs> yeah, that's but true. you were perfect. Yeah. And cuter, right? And cuter, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, you're definitely cuter than Brian. Um, I was doing like my career and my bikes. Career bikes, career bikes. Love bikes, passionate about bikes. And um, succeeding in my career, I did pretty, pretty okay. My skills that I was developing were like the skills of researching a concept, understanding the concept, and making it simple. Like, and when you work at a daily newspaper in the infographics department, I wound up being like the in charge of that. You have to be able to simplify information into a graphic. Every day, okay. all day. Just yep. like boom, boom, boom. And this is before the internet. Mm. So you'd be like, and I was an editor, right? So we're like sitting in the, in the meeting, it's like four o'clock. What are we gonna put on the front page? And I was like 25, I was so cocky. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, I like that article about stem cells. Give me four columns by 10, I'll figure it out. And I didn't even know what a stem cell was. <laughs> So back in the day, right? I mean, you couldn't even call. You like, couldn't gonna... Google it. You couldn't call anyone. You couldn't... We had like the World Book Encyclopedia. Dude. Wow, nice. Right? And so then you like, like flipping and, through and, the and, almanac, and, like stem cells. Old school, right? <laughs> so that's what, yeah, and I, that's what I used to do for a living. So like, and then I topped out. Like I was lucky. It was just coincidence. I did my job. We got a Pulitzer. So you're kind of dumb. So then I switched over. Like the dot com thing was going crazy at the time. And I had a pulse, and they hired me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and 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 then like I, I I took like that same like like thinking process that I've been like developing fast, and applied it to like software, which is more like it was actually Alta Vista. You guys remember Alta Vista before Google, the mm -hmm, search engine? Mm -hmm. Like I was doing really well at work. Like I was just like promote, 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 matriculate, promote, promote, get raises. You know that whole scene, right? And on the mountain bike, I was just kind of like chugging along, getting better, you know, and loving it and feeling a real compulsion. And and I, and, and I was having like these really like, I guess, I don't know how much you know about this, but like serious stress health problems. It was in my arms in the beginning. So we figured it was like a repetitive stress injury, mm, right? Yeah. And mm. like, it, it would get so bad, right? That I, I wouldn't be able to like use the utensils to eat. And I would be taking like 14 ibuprofen a day just to like oh, eat geez. my way through a work day. I was just feeling like, you know what? I was made for something different. That I was supposed to be doing something and I just wasn't doing it. 
and I, and I and I didn't know what it was, but I knew it had something to do with biking, and like my other like communication skills. Here's an inflection point in my life, and it sounds so funny. So my ex-wife and I are in the Palo Alto theater. We're gonna see this movie called Whale Rider. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I've yeah. seen it. Since seen it, I haven't. Amazing, seen it. right? Mm -hmm. It's about fate. Mm -hmm. It's about a Maori girl whose fate is to become the king. Okay. Super not accepted in a patriarchal society, yeah. <laughs> right? And so, like, I'm sitting there in this room full of millionaires, and I'm watching this movie, right? And I'm just starting to cry. And the movie's, like, playing out. And halfway through, I just stopped trying not to cry. It's just coming out. And then I had a vision. I was a speck. And somebody was like, dude, are you seeing that? And I was like, yes, I see it. Wow. He's like, so, are you honoring your fate? No. <laughs> and this is where inspirational story becomes bad life advice. Bad life advice. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Quit my job. My boss is like, dude, we need you. How much money do you want? And I was like, it's too late. And then he's like, all right, dude, no one's supposed to know this, but Yahoo's about to buy us. And if you can wait three weeks, you'll get your stock. This is the bad advice part. <laughs> no, man, I'm done. I, 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 <laughs> I could use a couple million. <laughs> oh, but, but you know what? Like, that's not good advice, kids. <laughs> that's bad advice. You can wait your, if it's been 15 years, you can wait three weeks. <laughs> then that was it, right? And I, and I just like, the next Monday, I didn't have a job, dude. <laughs> Brian Lopes, multiple world champion. He and I, back in the uh, 100 years ago, were daily riding friends. When I split off, I hadn't heard from him for 10 years out of the blue, randomly, <laughs> the phone rings, it's Brian. Hey Brian, what's going on? La, 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 la. Yeah, I heard world champion. Yeah, that's freaking rad, you know? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, bro? I'm like, you know, man, I just quit my job and I want to write a book. He's like, dude, I'll do that with you. So there you go. And at the time, I had like the journalism stuff going, but I was nobody in the bike world, you know what I mean? And so that's how we got like a book contract, right? Cool. was like, him on the you cover. You knew how to and, write and, and he had the name and the and recognition. he's like and, Brian Lopes. Yeah. And, and I thought working in a daily newspaper was stressful and I thought working at a dot com during the heyday was stressful. <laughs> so then I started writing the book and that was the most stressful thing I've done in my life. I got shingles. I don't even know what shingles was. <laughs> but that's kind of like the return to like purpose. So the book came out great, right? The book came out and I was like, you know what? Every real sport has a curriculum. I'm gonna make a curriculum. And someone very astutely observed like, you know, dude, maybe you should try coaching it to see if it works. I was like, huh, okay. I got a job with Simba here in Boulder with Kate Rao, like a kid's program. I ran that for the summer. So I started teaching, right? And it was like a mom of a kid. And now it's like pretty much like, I, like my full-time job. And I feel like when I'm teaching, it's like all the Kung Fu infographics, all my communication skills, what my body can do, like my heart, you know what I mean? It's like a full like manifestation of my ability. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's my full self. I know. When, I remember when I met you, because you were still with Pivot. That was like years ago. Yeah, and then I think it was 2014. That you and Sean did a clinic with Lee. And Curtis. Yeah. And Curtis, while I had MRSA. <clears throat> yeah. So I missed <laughs> that had one. MRSA, so she didn't get to go. There. <laughs> then we started doing the online mountain bike school. And Which was basically, we started working on cornering yeah, for like six months. Oh, I remember now. Yeah. And we, we did, did all the remote video <coughs> yeah. feedback. Yeah. And you we guys were like in, in Chile and we were, stuff. Yeah. We were in South America. Um, I forgot about all that. And we were that. doing Lee's online mountain bike school. And we were like, we basically just spent 20 minutes every single day working on cornering. And so then when we came back... Our querying had changed quite a bit, which was awesome. We will put a link to the online coaching in the description as well, because that's yeah. a really good option for people who don't have, um, don't you know, like I don't have access to a coach or don't like, they just need some direction. And I at least personally think there's something really valuable to being able to like, do guided practice for like very short periods every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because like it's awesome to do like a three hour <laughs> session with Lee, but it's also like a big mental overload, you know? You're yeah. like learning all this stuff, but to really like sink it in, you need to take that and then practice like every day. And it's great to have feedback on that.
that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk about your riding. You know, I've already told you about me. Let's talk yeah. about Sid and Mackie. All right, let's put Mackie in the hot seat first because he's sitting there. When I first met you, you were a gifted athlete. You're fast and strong. and Raced cross country for a long time. Yeah. And you had to suffer. <laughs> and when I met you, you were like still XC guy. You've always been a good rider. I mean, you don't get to be a pro and keep a pro. Stay a pro and be alive unless you're good. But like, I, I, but like we've been working with you on like all the normal stuff that people need, right? Like mm -hmm. better hinging. And so we spent a lot of time just like getting that down. Oh yeah. Like a mobility issue a lot for you. Of time. Yep. Like years. I'm still working on that. Right. It's like a daily thing, right? Yep. And then like and then like yeah, like plugging in like the basic cornering technique which you guys did remotely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then since we've been together in person and that con coincides with the with the machine, with the rip row, we've been working on like the higher level pumping skills mm -hmm. and like the higher level like cyclical elliptical the rip patterning. Rip patterning. Yeah. yeah. Which which of course as you know plugs in everywhere mm -hmm. so yeah so now that's all we focus on because mm -hmm. you already know how to work and i watched your povs it's like you're between two rocks and you get a half a pedal stroke it's like 1200 watts or something <laughs> it's like damn <laughs> you know most people are hard pressed to make 1200 watts anyway <laughs> but you throw it in there between rocks when your heart rates god knows what right so you know how to retrail trail pretty well you know how to go fast you know how to suffer like that's handled so all we work on i'm not gonna tell you how to be a pro athlete it's not you are one we only work on basics, don't mm -hmm. we? It's harder for you maybe because you're already pro. You already had this huge block of experience and a ton of neuromuscular programming. I learn a lot of that. Right, and of course you don't unlearn <laughs> it, it's permanent. So we've just been laying on top of that, right? Or uh, trying to adjust. adjust it so that it's right. correct. But it's, it's happening. It's the patterning, it's the practice, it's doing it over and over. That's what has then allowed me to apply it when I'm doing something at speed. Totally. Like, I can't practice it at speed because it's hard to go that fast. I have to practice it slow right. and meticulously over and over and over until it's so natural that it happens when I'm going fast. All right, we're switching. Sid's going into the hot seat. Well, I've been knowing you for a while and like your riding, it's completely different. Yeah. Like, it's just completely different. And like we talked with, you know, Mackie, like we, we, we always, we, we did a lot of work remotely on cornering mm -hmm. and some basic pumping stuff remotely. And it's just funny because like when I re do remote coaching, I get people sending video and it's usually like in a parking lot near their house. But you guys are like on top of a mountain or somewhere. <laughs> when, when I met you, I felt like there was something like I'm a pro rider, but I'm not really a pro rider and nobody knows it. I know it. Yeah. It's like not, I'm an imposter. A little of that going on, right? And that's what I was feeling and you weren't trusting yourself. Yeah. You know, you weren't trusting yourself. And I'll say this, like, if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, then you shouldn't trust yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's reasonable. And that's a sign of a smart person, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I would say that like, just from my experience with you, riding with you and just reading what you put out there that like, I think you're like, you're stepping into your bridges, you know, yeah. as an athlete. Um, and that you're executing, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I can see it and it's killer. But your jumping, man, has gotten like solid, like really reliable, especially on some big jumps here, you know, and, and clean. I think it, jumping for me is still the hardest thing because I haven't figured out how to really like enjoy it a ton. She doesn't still want for to me, jump I'm like, yet. <laughs> okay, I could jump this thing or like I could squash it and like not get that much air and still go just as fast. Yeah, you need way more reps, man. Yeah. That's what you need. This is true. And I know you guys are like busy, like living a glamorous life in your van <laughs> and you probably just do a lot of riding, right? Like, yeah. cause you guys for training, but it would be good to jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. Especially since like you decided to be an enduro racer and enduroing has jumping. You have the awkward like combination of being smart and having a lot of experience and you're like self-aware like that and self-critical like that the, the 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 fun happens in a flow state right mm -hmm. so like anything short of that you're just like ah oh, i suck my little pinky isn't right my pancreas <laughs> isn't doing what it's you know what i mean you're so freaking self-aware <laughs> you know and you're like spleen's not making a bile yeah. right? if you get a chance like like push your arousal level right past the point where you can't pay attention and rip it yeah you know but like well that's like what we did last year and on the slalom track. that was fun like, that, that was, was awesome pretty fun yeah that was the game yeah. we played remember yeah yeah so you guys showed up mm -hmm. and i'm like we did a little kung fu like a little skill yeah. stuff yeah, yeah we did some skills work i was like sid you know enough yeah 
it's time for you to get mad. <laughs> yes, that right? was it. And I was like, you're as, uh, you're under aroused all the time. Yeah. You're thinking too much. And like, we, I was trying to like say things that would be just hurtful enough, right? <laughs> that you would like get pissed enough that you would cross the line, right? Yeah. But did you notice how like sometimes like five percent angrier or five percent like a little bit more aroused makes you like two hundred percent better? Yeah. Like, like there's like like a I there's a point that. where you cross where like your system turns on like like if a mountain lion's chasing you through the woods yeah. <laughs> and you're not gonna run into a tree right because your systems are on yeah right mm -hmm. so like we are all made that way right and, and and so like that's something i was encouraging you to do is like i felt like you had like a, a, a completely more than adequate toolkit and when we were practicing together it was perfect and then you weren't executing it yeah so i wanted you to learn how to ride and race like eight, eight out of ten was that mm -hmm. it I think so, yeah. And but then she broke yeah. a 27 second slalom. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing too. So like I've had like, I've been timing people on the slalom and you're using the free lap timer. Yeah. yeah. So it was an accurate time So and for a timing system. So I have like, I know like how fast, like a fast woman is and you're the fastest woman ever. <laughs> that's awesome. Pro downhillers included. That's awesome. There's certain factory racers who you know. At that level, it was clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so clean. It was clean, right? And, like, that's, like, part of the mission for everybody. But, like, understand, right? Like, that doesn't work unless you've got skill. Right. Mm -hmm. If you just push to that point, you're going to use your instincts. And, and you're going to crash. If, if, <laughs> if, you're normal, if you don't have the, yeah, the instincts correct instincts. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're a normal human being, you see something that you find threatening, you're going to push your head away from danger, get tense, think bad thoughts, like, all that stuff. And the thing that's crazy about your lizard is, like, all it cares about is don't die. Pretty much. Potentially make babies. Although... It, when you're 15 to 19, yeah, the, the make babies is number one. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if you die. Yeah. Who cares, right? Um, it's true. So, but like, like it, your lizard, like the part of you that's subconscious, which is like let's say a zillion times faster and smarter than your conscious self, roughly a zillion. There's way more going on than than you know. It's gonna basically say like, what goal have you given me? I'm gonna achieve that goal for you and maybe, and try not to let you die. That's pretty much it, right? Mm -hmm. So like, if you're like the old way, like, oh, I'm just gonna make it through this section. Okay, you're gonna execute probably the lean back, get stiff, worry about your wheel size <laughs> thing. <laughs> and you'll make it and you won't die. But you just made a pattern. Yeah. And it gets worse and worse and worse. When you're under stress, you're gonna execute the dominant pattern. I hear from a lot of people, a lot. Oh, I want to be, I want to win, I want to do the work. You know how many people do the work? Two Maybe. people. <laughs> These guys had the freaking like wherewithal to like, like pull themselves out of like who they are and, and create who they can be. Oh, that was wise. Yep. That was wise. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Like, I'm going to write that down. But they that did the work. Really They've nice done guy. the work and they're still doing it. They're still doing the work. And like, and I feel this in myself, right? But like they're repatterning their bodies. And so then when they do push to that flow state, the dominant pattern is, is the new row, anti-row, shred good, pattern. Yeah. If it's frenetic and exciting, you know, whoa, 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 like certain people on the videos, like they're fast, but it's like sketchy. Understand that like every time you're riding and your head gets displaced in space and you get that little like danger signal that's exciting, you know what that is? That's your body slowing down because it says danger. That's right, and, then, and but it's exciting. Yeah. God knows, I rode a bike like that for 25 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What we're shooting for here, right, is the same sensations of like good powder skiing, dropping into a wave on a surfboard. Our bodies are programmed for that. And those oscillations are like a massive flow trigger, right? So like the way we teach riding right now is all about waves, isn't it? And it's all about row, anti-row, and making it elliptical and patterning it, right? So that when you get on your bike, it could be a smooth trail or a roughy trail you can create that feeling for yourself and slip into flow, right? And that's what we pay the big bucks for. We are going to use that as a transition to talk a little bit about the rip row. Talk just a little bit about the like row, anti-row, the rip row movement. Instead of thinking about up and down, I think about like a wave, right? So it's like, well, am I in a trough or am I on a crest, right? So the, the space between two rollers, trough, over the roller, crest. And then corners. And Same thing. But sideways. Yeah. That's, yeah. When, when you pointed that out to me, I was like, 
Oh, dude, that's when it, I get uh, it. It took me forever, right? So anyway, yeah. like, so basically, like, like, it, and and when when you coming through a trough, or basically, like, whenever like your front ends like trending toward you, like, say you're on a technical climb, you come to a ledge, that's a row. In a basic sense, then in a row, you're you're extending with your hips, pushing your feet away from you, and you're pulling your hands toward you. It's like rowing. That's why I call it rowing. It's like rowing on or like a rowing machine, right? And, and, and that, that pattern does a lot for you. One thing is, is like when you, when you hit a bump or, or go through, the, the bars are coming at you anyway. So then by actually bringing them towards you, you manage, you, you minimize or eliminate that impact. And then as you come across the, the, the crest, you just execute the opposite pattern. Your, your feet start to come towards you and your hands go away from you. And that's basically row anti row, and it applies like you said, like like in corners, sideways, um, on smooth bumps, like a bunny hop is a bunny hop on flat ground over a thing is a row and an anti row, and then a row back to level. So you're basically making a roller in the air. Yeah. Over the object. Totally. Like your bike can't go. Dark. It always has to follow a problem, mm -hmm. right? That's what they love, like what I want to do. So right, so we basically like we simplify everything into parabolas. Sid and I have done a video about the Ripro and training on it and what it is and all that. So we will put a card to it up here. Go check that out. We're not going to get too deep into the Ripro because we already talked about it some. We do race runs on this thing. So there's of actually like... a question about that on Patreon. Oh, okay, well. cool. Patrick so what's the question? Asks, how do you guys use the Ripro? What movements do you do? How much? How often? Etc. That's so, a great. Question. That is that's a great question. I think what you were yeah. Asking. So I was about to talk about that. So <laughs> we have race runs that we've made of specific runs. One of them is Jagged Axe at Glorietta in Santa Fe. It's brutal. It's a five minute run. It's like super rocky and we just have these different patterns for different sections of it. And I wanna I wanna add um, that it's a POV footage from, from Mackie, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's I'm really picky about what I put in my brain. <laughs> Most POV footage I can't watch because it's crap. <laughs> but like but you're getting like you you're reading trail at pro pace and then then the then roughly like rip road movements are tied to what the trail's doing. Yep. And you basically just try to keep up, right? Yeah, pretty so much. So we made like two workout videos They're on, They're on the Ripro channel as yep. well as okay. yeah. Ripro.com. So we'll put a link to that if you want to try that workout out. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we've been doing because for us, it's like really helpful to kind of mimic that descending in an interval, sure. especially when we were taking some time off the bikes. We were able to do like a workout in like half an hour, which we did talk about in our yeah, program. Yeah. You know what I'd like and to I've been hitting race pace heart rates. Like I was hitting 175 beats a minute, which for me is like high race pace heart rate on this thing, literally not going anywhere. So you can Pretty suffer rad. if you want to. Yeah, what I noticed, cause I'll do, I'll do the same, the same videos that you guys made, mm -hmm. which I love is um, number one, like it's over before I know it. And my heart rate is like at ninety five percent of max, mm -hmm. which is killer. Because if you're just sitting there staring at the wall, it's like more painful. Oh man, you're just sitting on like a spin bike, you're yeah, just like, I, I, I want to die. Dude, I've done my time. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing that I find interesting is like, like while I'm watching the video, it's like learning the trail. Yeah. And I find myself looking farther ahead, mm -hmm. and I find myself just like naturally, like really, like if you if I see a big rock coming, like I'll. Like time it, mm -hmm. and I really, really believe that that at a neuromuscular level, like that's making me a better rider. For th almost 30 years, I've been riding left foot forward. So basically, um, whenever I rip row, I start with my right foot forward, and now I don't care either way. Nice. It's all, all good. This is like your bunny hop movement, your hit a jump movement, your hit a drop movement. This is that movement over and over. Technical climb. Technical climb. Yep. No, no just, I, I, I'm riding this thing like I invented. Yeah. <laughs> there was a question specifically about you, like if you, when you're using the Ripro in the bike stance, which is what Lee's doing versus moto stance. What is a cue? Holy cow! That's <laughs> serious work. Sorry. Doing it that you are, that your positioning is right when you're in bike oh, stance. This is a good question. Hang on, let me pay for that effort. <laughs> Who asked this question? Give uh, Lindsay a... said, I would love more okay. information about using the Ripro with the pedals in bike stance. How do I know if I'm doing it right? And if not, how do I learn to do it correctly? Fair enough. So here's an, an awful truth about being a bike rider. You ready for this? We have to function with our feet offset, like 340, 350 millimeters. A normal person 
even a lot of pros, when you see them riding, right, you can see from a mile away, see how one leg's behind the other, right? That's really universal. And if you talk to people who ride like that, which is most of you, right, they'll, they'll admit that this leg gets more tired on downhills, the back leg, and often the low back will hurt. This is happening because your hips are crooked. Can you see that? Yep. So like when, when you, this is hard enough. Like for most people, you know this, you've been working on this for years. This is hard enough. Yep. Right? To take this foot now and put it up here and hinge, look at like the stretch on the hamstring. You see that? And so most people don't have that mobility. They also don't have this dorsiflexion right here. Most people are here because this is crooked and being pulled out. So see how like this, this tightness will kind of reduce the stretch on this hamstring and reduce this dorsiflexion. You ready? This would be perfect, not easy. When we're on the bike, we really want the knees to be next to each other. And this is hard, guys. Sid and I have been working on this yeah. for years. This is, but that's your cue on the rip row. Yeah. You're yes. doing it right if you're hinged and your knees are next to, to each other. And what's cool about this, this becomes this becomes your like triangle of awesome. It's huge. Pedal, pedal, knee. Perfect world. Your knees right on top of the bottom bracket on your bike or right on top of the pivot on the rip row. Start square, right? And you can just, one thing that's good about like about the machine, right? So you can put your feet wherever you want. So you can just gradually put your feet out. See what's going on there? So I'm like on little tiny cranks right now, <laughs> right? And 50 millimeter cranks. Exactly, which would be good for pump track. Knees. <laughs> so that's pretty good. And you're allowed to raise your right heel if you want to, that's fine, your back heel. And so you get that going. If, 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 if you go another like centimeter and you're crooked, then go back. Like it's really important because we're talking about patterning that you always perfect that hinge and the basic patterning of rowing and anti-rowing. And where your feet are is secondary, okay? And then what you can do, of course, is you can gradually work to your full width. I think we mainly answered this question from Karina because yes, Lee works specifically one-on-one -on -one with people as a coach. Um, she is looking to improve her skills and get faster, doesn't know where to start, and she lives in Australia. Well, if you live in Aus if, if you live in Australia, you should come visit us huh? yeah. during during our summer, which is your winter. <laughs> and people do like well, people come from all over the place to see us. So this is a Although great I think place. in Australia it's so hot in the summer that winter's actually the nice riding oh, time. Oh, maybe. Well, maybe. Where in Australia, yeah, that's probably true. But um, but the the thing to do now would be to go to our online school, llbmtb.com, and you can start to follow the curriculum there. And then we have a Facebook group. And so, um, you know, you can post videos and get feedback, and that's a good way to start. This person says, I know that Lee has had such a profound effect on so many riders from beginner to pro. Why doesn't he get the credit in the mountain bike world that most of us feel he deserves? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Reactive mountain biking. Oh, I don't even know that person. I didn't even pay them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I'm not one of the bros, <laughs> right? That's part of it. I just try to do my stuff and do the best work I can. And like uh, Mackie said earlier, um, the problem with being smooth is that no one notices. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, so second part of the question from Reactive Mountain Biking, wondering if Lee is doing a special lesson pricing through our YouTube or Patreon. Not at the moment. However, we are hoping to at some point do kind of a collaborative clinic where basically we maybe we could do it at a bike park or do it here at Valmont where Mackie and I would be there as kind of assistant coaches and to hang out with you guys and Tread. Lee would be in charge of giving us all the kung fu. Um, that would be offered out to patrons first. More fun. details coming, but yeah. it sounds super yeah. fun. It'll so. fill too, so that's good to offer to people first. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, I think cool. that's that about wraps up our questions and there's a ton of amazing information in this mm -hmm. and life so a good and one. profound life advice yeah like, life advice like, like, like don't quit just, your job three weeks just yeah, make it the yeah, extra three gig. weeks <laughs> that's your stock fest <laughs> <laughs> turns out on that note a huge thanks to lee we appreciate you sitting down with us yes, answering welcome. all these questions being an awesome coach go shred this weekend and be more awesome and thanks for watching our channel we'll see you guys next time <laughs>